Okay, so um, this is a quick sketch that I did. It's just in pencil form and it's on tracing paper. And I did the sketch by taking a SolidWorks image. Started with SolidWorks image. Okay, this is the underlay to say, okay, this is about where and how my circuit board is going to fit into this. So you can see that. And then the next thing I did was I took that same sketch and I used the outlines that are here to generate the next images that I need. Okay, so you notice that these all fit right in line. And so what you end up with is the circuit board and then the base structure of what the remote is going to look like along with the cover and um, a magnet that's going to clip in and you can see how the circuit board fits in there and then from that I went and generated a keypad again using my base image I copied my keys and I end up with what the rubber pad is going to look like that's going to go on top of that. And then I also generated, you're seeing here, the top view, a side view, and a front view for what this is going to look like. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take these, I'm going to transfer them onto a large sheet of tracing paper and using um, a Sharpie, which you see here. Okay, so you can kind of see here I've placed the um, pencil sketches that I did on tracing paper underneath the sheet of tracing paper that I'm using here. It's got a little blue uh, hue to it. And the way you do that is with a Prismacolor and some Bestine. Okay, you just, um, take the Prismacolor this and you're going to scrape that like this you'll get your mixed media that's on there you'll take your rag you get this set with bestine and then you'll swipe this across in order to get your um, your blended color that that we're looking to to obtain there so now what I'm going to do I'm just going to use a sharpie I'm going to transfer all of my lines for each of these images onto this page in hard sharpie so I have a defined image as to what I'm trying to render and what I'm trying to uh, accomplish for drawing. Okay um, so I have the first uh, portion of this the perspective done showing the full thing and it's again just in line form and so you're kind of seeing how um, the progress on the rendering is doing and I'm going to move to the next section which is over here showing the bottom portion of the cover the battery cover a little magnet that's going to hold this cover on um, and the circuit board it's over here okay so uh, generated the next section here um, again with the the base cover portion of this and the circuit board and this battery cover and a magnet to hold this in position and I'm getting ready to position this piece here where it needs to go um, and then I'll generate a top I kind of have a top set but um, I'll probably work off of this piece here um, make a copy of it and position it above these so you can see how the assembly goes So uh, here you can see I'm working on this upper section here and um, I'm going to include everything up in here other than the buttons so you'll just see some openings here and what I envision for this particular part is that this is a clear um, uh, ABS material um, that's going to be over molded with a second, gen uh, second color that will match the bottom color that's on the bottom and this will be clear that'll be clear here so you can see uh, the IR will move through and then the LED that's underneath here will um, illuminate this section here this could have a texture on the underside of it even though it's clear 
and um, that's how this will go together. And then I'll have three other views I have to put in over here to show kind of what the, uh, the elevations look like. Okay, um, I don't know, I guess I've spent maybe 40 minutes on this. Um, so all the dark lines, all the uh, <clears throat> Sharpie lines are done. And I can start now adding color to this and start shading things in. And then after I get done with that, I'll, I'll throw in some uh, heavy lines in here to give me some depth on it. So that's where I'm at so far. So I just want to make sure that everybody understands, you know, when you do this on tracing paper, you're able to turn it over and you're able to do the shading on the back side as opposed to the front side. Um, you can do shading on both sides, but this really helps um, uh, maintain the level of crispness of your lines in the front. So it doesn't wash out your black lines that you put down and it allows you to um, get more depth in your rendering. Okay, so... Um, I'm working on the backside, and what you can notice here on this tracing paper, what I like about it is that it's very forgiving. You can put as much, you can put more ink down, and it it sucks it in, and you can wipe it away if you're not happy with with what you got. And it doesn't leave super hard lines. So as you go through, it it just kind of blends in, and you don't really see you know, lines from where you from where you stopped and a lot of times you'll get that with regular like craft paper or um, bond marker bond paper and so here you can see you know it, it gives you a nice smooth line um, and you can't see where all your strokes are so you get a nice tone across the whole image um, so uh, we continue to move through the process here and I'm still working on the back side and putting tones in and kind of getting a feel for what I want the rendering to look like. I mean, in terms of um, darkness and lightness and uh, reflections and things like that, so shadows. And I just continue to put in the necessary features. Okay, so uh, here's we are. Here's where we are now with um, throwing some color again on the back, and we continue to progress in terms of uh, adding shade and value and understanding how we want reflections and so forth to come off on a part. And uh, I'll turn this over so you can kind of see what it looks like when you flip it around. And so we just keep working it, and. Um, then eventually we'll turn it over and um, do some highlights on the top surface once I'm done on the back. So here we are. Um, we're getting ready to get finished up. I've uh, put a vignette around the outside and I've gone through and added uh, white Prismacolor pencils to some of these key features here. I went through and added some darker lines around the perimeters of these parts to make them show up a little bit. The vignette cuts through the opening here so you can kind of see that, okay, this is, these are openings that go all the way through here. Um, and that's about it, you know. Uh, can be better um, in terms of like the showing of certain textures and so forth. This kind of looks like it's mirrored or, or kind of a glossy finish on the top of this. Um, but it could be better and you can go in and continue to refine as you go through it. So I'm gonna put my name in here somewhere. I'll put the, the date, and I'm gonna put some call outs as to what the different components are. Okay, well, I'm uh, done um, with the rendering. This is as much time as I wanna put in on this. And um, so, we got a vignette, I added my name, I added um, the date, I added the concept. So you need a number that's here because uh, in order to communicate to co-workers and uh, outside agencies which concept you're talking about, you need to make sure that you list it somehow. Concept A or uh, C1, C2, C3, that type of thing. So um, 
Um, I haven't mounted this yet. Once you mount it with the with um, spray mount, um, it'll become that much more vivid. And once I get it mounted, then I'll go ahead and use some of this right here, which is um, it's just a, a pro white material that took them in and get the highlights to really pop. That's it. Okay, well, we're finished with the rendering. I'm going to show you the final results here. It's been mounted in just a second, but I did want to cover some of the different tools that we used on this. One is just some basic Prismacolor um, design markers, and we have about three or four different shades of gray, starting from a 50% going to about 80%. We have a large Sharpie, a fine Sharpie, and then whatever this is, like a chisel-type Sharpie. Um, I used a really fine... Um, fine brush to do uh, the highlights and so it's important to have something that you're going to be able to line, lay some good white lines down with and having a nice brush is important. Uh, we, I covered the pro white. Um, I, I like to use this type of a, a pencil sharpener because um, it gets down, it gets the um, base material for the pencil gone and then you can go in and use these finer um, these finer points on here to sharpen up the pencil um, and there's three different three different uh, sections there to do that um, these erasers are great uh, the Alvins uh, work really good they don't leave any material left behind they don't smear your work it just takes it off and um, recommend get two or three of these uh, standard pencil a Prismo color white pen, uh, white pencil for some of the line highlights and then this pastel a Prismacolor a chalk stuff that I used, an X-Acto. Um, drafting tape is good. There's some actual uh, drawing tape. Um, so you just want to make sure if you use a tape that you use something that's not going to leave glue or residue behind or it's not going to pull your work off as you, you know, it's not going to tear the tracing paper or the rendering uh, material that you're using. And um, some good rulers and straight edges um, to put your lines down with. And we'll just pull in this rendering, and you can kind of see what how the highlights have come out on some of those areas. I went through, I didn't get all the highlights in that I wanted. I, I did these and left some out over this way, but they, they help show you know, like the button areas, um, the edges on some of the, the keypad, the highlights on some of the plastic pieces, like around here. So it takes it from kind of a, I'll call fill in the line type appearance. Um, so you get rid of some of those dark lines that are running around there with some of the, by using some of the highlights. Um, that's it.